Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Grab yourself a cup of tea and join me, please. I've just come from my office, which is upstairs, reading some of your wonderful notes, your letters, your kind words. Uh, one I just finished reading, the lady said, I really feel when you and your crew, she called all of you crew, uh, that I, you're just friends and that I feel like I really know you. And, and I wrote to her and I said, that's exactly what we want. So welcome, come right on in. Thank God for the kind of technology we have today that perhaps you can kind of foster those feelings of uh, knowing someone. So welcome, welcome. Got a, a guest today that uh, when his agent, his publisher contacted me, I knew I wanted him to come because uh, his agent, Mr. Don Otis, said that his book is really gonna kind of shake up at least a part of the church. His name is Stephen Black, and he is an ordained minister and has written a book called Freedom Realized, where he addresses the biblical view of homosexuality, and that has really been watered down in recent years, and the church has taken a whole little different look at it, uh, but we can't change what the Bible says. And so uh, Stephen, who is a former homosexual, he's married now with three children, and he said that freedom can be realized. I'm anxious for you to meet him. And I'm going to join Stephanie over there. We're going to make a chive and onion hash brown. This is one, I think the next time I have company, I will make this one uh, because I was tasting it as put it together. So I'll fix that for you in a minute with Stephanie. Uh, but I, I was going through the, you know, the stuff we have around and we have just a few more of these books and I, this is kind of the time of year when people take a look and say, I'm going to get healthier. I'm going to do this, this, or this, and this. And this would help you. Dr. Don Colbert is really recognized as a great doctor and author. I can do this diet. We have offered it before. But he deals with uh, such things as where the obesity in this nation is taking us. Also, there's one uh, chapter here, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Losers. And, uh, boy, you talk about a complete book. This one is just that. And so I'm going to offer it this one more time. If you see it uh, in the future, it's because you're watching a rerun. <laughs> but you can have this book for a gift of $20. If you look on the back of it, I think it costs more than that if you bought it in a store. Information is on your screen for uh, your credit card. That's the 800 number and also the address if you would like to write to us and send us a check like I do. Uh, either way is just fine. I hope you'll take advantage of it while we still have some. And here you are. Here I am. Yeah, this is kind of a happy day. Can we tell? Sure. Who's here today? Sure. Yeah, her daughter, the beautiful Alexa is Alexis. working here. She mm -hmm. part of the part time or full time? Oh, part time. She hurt her back over Christmas. She wasn't able to start school when she was supposed to, so mm -hmm. she needed a little part time gig to get her through and. Mm -hmm. Bob was gracious enough to let her come work here. And so. we need her, so it's, it's a good exchange. Uh, yes. She was on the show several years ago. Which several years young. ago, Think yeah. we could get her on again? I asked her. She said no. No way. <laughs> I said, you'll be here on Wednesdays. Do you want to do a show? She's like, no. Oh. <laughs> 21. She, she didn't think about it. it. Yeah, right. Yeah, no. okay, okay, this, um, I put it together because I was the only one here this morning. And Man. boy, no. does it taste good. Boy, <laughs> this, is gonna, this is like comfort food. Mm -hmm. This looks so good. So if you'll spray the pan for me mm -hmm. over the sink mm -hmm. and then I have, we're having the recipe because it's a huge it's recipe. It's a huge recipe. It's huge. So you can half it. Is have what you we noticed did. a lot of these? So they'll say that, okay, now put this one is in like the freezer family. for three yeah. months. Yeah. This yeah. is like, or you, yeah, you could do half and half and, and have a, a something for later, so which we're I doing think is a great a idea. So this is half. So that's um, half and half, which you're supposed to use a cup and a half. So it was three quarter cup. Mm -hmm. And then this I love. Oh yeah. This is um, chives. Uh, Just put that on your desk with cream the box of crackers. But I'm saying, what a great way to add flavor. Mm -hmm. Great way to add. So yeah. it's chive and onion, mm -hmm. and it's one third le less fat. Mm -hmm. Cream cheese, which we Let's need see. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have a right utensil this, for you? Because this is half and half. That. And half and half and potatoes. And this is what I used this morning. Okay. And then we have salt, pepper. A teaspoon of salt, some pepper, and then two tablespoons of minced onion in here. Yes. We're just going to melt this up real quick, okay? Yeah. And uh, 
let me say on, on these, these are the hash browns, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you've all used them, and God bless whoever decided to do this, Seriously. put them in a bag out of freezer. Yes. Uh, make sure you put the 20 ounces in, because I didn't look at the amount, and it had 30 ounces, and um, it, could make it, <laughs> it could make it kind of dry, except oh, okay. Susan. Susan. Now, Susan will not come on camera, but she's right over there, and so she worked with it a little bit, or, or the, the ones I made would have been pretty dry, so we'll warn you on that. In so other just words, watch the amounts. look to see how much, yeah. because most of the recipes are very specific, yes. how many ounces. Yes, yes, so I'm just melting all of this together, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add the potatoes in here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to layer it in the, in the um, pan with Swiss cheese and chives, and then we're going to dollop it with butter. I mean, hello. <laughs> Comfort food. It is very tasty. So good. I, I mean, the onion. It, I, yeah. I wish you could, I wish they could smell the onions yeah. and the chives because it's crazy the amount of flavor just that just that one item adds. Yeah, I was in the kitchen by myself this morning, so I was really licking my fingers oh. all the time. <laughs> that <moment. laughs> That's funny. I was late this morning, so Miss Rippy had to do all the work all by herself. Yes. Um, but, you know, if you watch Food Network once in a while, they're always licking their fingers. Yeah. How could you cook without doing that? Right? you got to taste. Yeah, and you can use all I'm that because she I'm measured gonna, it out. Okay, I'm going to do just, I just wanted to get that mixed up. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. But um, I've mentioned before how just one unusual dish mm -hmm. or your bread maybe, the way you can really kind of, just up change. your up your meal just one notch. Yeah, yep. change a, a biscuit or something. Yes. Um, that's what people will remember probably more than what your meat dish was. I mean, this is just comfort. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. This I could save lives right This here. could save lives. I have it all mixed up. I'm going to put a third of this on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to put some Swiss cheese and some chives, and I'm just going to layer. Mm -hmm. And then on the top, I'm going to dot it with butter. Dot it. That's <laughs> what it says, dot it with butter. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to bake it. You know, there's really no end to what you can do with uh, baked potatoes. Oh, gosh, yeah. Potato casserole. I love making, like, smashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. I do that sometimes at home. That's a favorite. Well, this just came out of the oven. It's really hot. I want to taste this, even though I shouldn't. Well, also, uh, you were talking about the chives, mm -hmm. the Swiss cheese. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is like comfort. This is going to be yummy. like a spiritual experience. Yes. I'm going to have to taste it because we're going to run out of time. Watch Arlene's face. Okay. Because it's going to be I good. don't like to burn my mouth on TV. No. Okay. So that's cheese and chives. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. I got to taste it. I got to. It really is a spiritual experience. I mean, look at that. Oh. Oh. The more it's... Mmm. You have um, to have it. On. Nah. And don't forget when so you get the good. recipe. And I'll, I'll tell Wanda, you know, to let them know that it's a humongous recipe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, mm. it's so hot, it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. Anyway, it's called chive and onion hash, onion hash browns. And uh, we don't want you to miss any time at all with my guest, Stephen Black. So... The information for you to get this recipe, which is completely free for you, is coming up on your screen, and take advantage of it if you'd like to have it. But next, you're going to meet Stephen Black, a very interesting guy. Promise you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Stephen, welcome to Homekeepers. Um, I love your representative, um, Don Otis, and uh, he's wonderful to work with. But he told me this book is really going to shake, shake people up. It's going to shake the church up if, if they will read it. And it deals with uh, homosexuality, and which has really become controversial even in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we get to that part of it, though, I want you to tell us your story. Okay. Because you have a you have a background in homosexuality, and the Lord has given you complete freedom. And you're a are you a grandfather? I am a grandfather. Yeah. So you're a husband, 
father, grandfather. Yes, ma'am. Which um, brings you a lot of joy, I believe. It does. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. what's your story? Well, my story is, I mean, I was radically transformed by the gospel of Jesus, but I was raised in Catholicism. I had an intact family. Um, Mom and dad loved one another, but they, they really had a, a minimal Christianity. So mm -hmm. I was not really raised in the Word of God or the ways of God, mm -hmm. except to have some input through parochial school and going to Mass. Uh, but um, I lived in that world and at the same time had a dad who was a, uh, a Navy boxer and career military, and they shipped him off in the early days. And so the first five years of my life, my dad wasn't really present. It was also the time when I was unfortunately molested. And uh, so a lot of sexual confusion came into my life at an early age. Uh, but I, I, by the time I hit puberty, I embraced a gay identity. And uh, I didn't know that I had any other choice but to live uh, homosexually. Uh, everybody at school, the bullies were all calling me gay, queer, sissy, faggot. I was beat up. Uh, it, was, it was really pretty, pretty dark. And so by the time I get into high school, I've, I'm living in a, in a gay culture. I had somebody who just happened to come into my world at 14 and introduced me to this thing called the gay community. I didn't even know it existed. And so I lived eight years gay identified from age 14 to 22. At age 22, well, back up a year and a half, my brother, uh, 18 months younger than me, died uh, in the military in Germany. And it caused me to uh, to really think about eternity. And so for about a year and a half, I was crying out to God with all my heart for truth. Uh, I wanted to understand. I had an unfortunate uh, situation with a family uh, parish priest who told me it was okay to be gay. Matter of fact, all the more reason, wink, wink, to mm -hmm. come to Mass. So it was really seductive and broken. And so I was, you know, with that confusion and then crying out to God, well, so happens he heard me. He heard me, he heard my cry and brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry like clay. The says. Yeah, yeah. And let's go back, let's go back amazing. a little, yeah, let's go back a little bit because today they're saying they're born that way. Um, do you believe you would have turned out that way if you had not been molested, that if something hadn't just intercepted your growth uh, mentally, physically, emotionally? I personally do not believe I would have went into homosexuality, uh, no doubt probably sexual sin, but uh, yeah, I, I believed it really brought chaos into my identity and my sexuality. Uh, that's, um, that's something that I think people really n grapple with and need to under understand, the genesis of the whole thing. Right. I had it explained to me years ago by a gentleman I was interviewing, he says it's like this, a baby is born. They don't know if they're male or female. They don't know squat, but they're born with needs. And uh, two of those needs are to be loved, nurtured, and handled by both sexes. Right. So God gives you a mother and a father for that. That's, that's right. Now, if one of those is missing, the, a need goes unmet, and Satan likes to come in at, at the point of need, uh, you said your dad was gone for a long time, but also uh, just the molestation would set up uh, an unbelievable confusion. And how old were you? Six. And then again at 10. And then some things happened as an early uh, uh, teenager uh, with cousins and, and other people. And so there was all this sexual chaos uh, that came into my life. It's very broken, very distorted. Yes. And... It makes me wonder, too, and you can put some light on this. Parents need to be very vigilant today. I'm not sure if I had young children today, I would let them go to a sleepover. You don't know who's in that, what's in that house. I mean, it's true. that never entered my mind back then. Right. But what, what's your thought on that? How... How protective are you in watching after those grandkids? Well, of course, I don't have total control right. of that. But when Robin and I uh, were raising our children, we absolutely would not allow sleepovers with people that we did not implicitly know and understand what the environment 
was going to be like with our children there. Um, we did allow some, but very, very limited. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were much more comfortable with having somebody else come into our home and really watch it and really bring guard in. We were very, even uh, the understanding of human sexuality and development, very modest yeah. in teaching our children about sexuality and nakedness and all of that. So we were very, Which very Which was something protective. you never had growing up. That's right. And so we understood yeah. that. And both my wife and I have had, you know, she has her own uh, story, uh, not like mine, but but you know some things that brought in yeah. that says we have to protect our children. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt you, but just the same, I think we need to put a spotlight on. Okay, we live in a very wicked, sensual, pornographic world. That's right. And get your head out of the sand and make sure that you're doing everything you can to protect your children and cover them, cover them with prayer. That's right. Okay, now uh, before I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was okay. worth it. That was worth yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. Um, you begin to cry out to God, uh, and why not? I, you know, I'd like to meet the people who molested you and, and wring their necks. I, it, it, it angers me. Yeah. I mean, to the point of, yeah. uh, I just how dare you? Right. You know, take the innocence away from a child. That's so you right. had a lot of reason to cry out to God, but you, how did you know how? You weren't raised in a religious system that taught you how to cry out to God. Not cry out, um, I mean prayer, mm -hmm. and you know, the Lord's Prayer, and, and praying. Mm -hmm. I did understand that, and I had a belief in God. Mm -hmm. And so I, I knew some things about God, and I knew that my parents absolutely did not like, you know, having a son that was living homosexually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't hardly even talked about. My dad, you know, couldn't stand it. Mm -hmm. So I was crying out after my brother died, and things began to happen and I was studying to be an architect and I was in an engineering um, uh, part, office in a manufacturing company and they were all praying for my salvation. And so uh, lo and behold, I, February of 1983, I had a friend who came in from out of town and said, hey, let's go party. And the next day we went to her sister's house. They were Assembly of God. And uh, she says, now I have to warn you, these people are really religious. And I said, well, my sister's a Southern Baptist, you know, the whole Protestant thing. <laughs> Simplies you know? are a whole like, lot worse than that. Those are a bunch of weird people. <laughs> and she said, oh, but this is really weird. These are Assembly of God people. I said, well, let's go for the party, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we went to their home. Uh -huh. And it was amazing. I was just sitting there as they were talking to her. They weren't even trying to witness to me or anything. And they're talking to her about Jesus, coming and going, answering their prayers, speaking to their hearts. And I was thinking, these people are crazy. I've never known a Jesus like yeah. this. All of a sudden, as I am sitting in their home, the Spirit of God, I didn't know that's what was happening to me, but I do now. The Spirit of God came over me. My heart began to pound. And I heard this voice in my head, if you do not accept me tonight, you're going to die. And I, and I knew, I just felt like it was God. And my heart began to pound. And all of a sudden, the ladies were all talking and I was just sitting there. They all left the room and it became quiet. And I was with this man. His name was Steve too. And he says, I, I, I looked over at him and I said, Brother, I need to know the Lord like you all know the Lord. And he stands up and he says, Brother, the Lord is calling you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting what here. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, oh, I, my heart was pounding. I said, yes, yes. And he prays with me. And something happened as he was praying with me. I saw the cross. You know, in, in most Catholic, well, all Catholic uh, churches, there's a crucifix. Yeah. And I saw holy Jesus on the cross suffering and dying. And all of my sin was coming up out of me and into him. And as, this, and as this began to happen, I felt changed. And, and so later on that night, this girl I was with, she goes, so does this mean you're not going to be gay anymore? And I said, you know, I don't know. I guess it means whatever Jesus has for me. You absolutely had a supernatural experience. I if, did. If you've just joined us, I'm talking to Stephen Black, and he is uh, a pastor and also an author, and we are talking about his book, Freedom Realized. The information is on the screen. Uh, let me 
say to every church leader, pastors and every leader on down, you need this book. This book absolutely spells out the problems, gives you understanding. The Bible says good understanding giveth favor. So, um, and the Bible also says lay hands suddenly on no man. So this will give you, you know, an understanding and how you can deal with people who possibly want to come out of the uh, gay lifestyle because there's a lot of them who do. And it's still sin today. And the, <laughs> the word of God hasn't changed on that. And, uh, you know, Stephen, I have been familiar, really, I think from the beginning of some of these ministries uh, where the spotlight was on people like yourself and they came out of the uh, gay community and they married and they had children and they began to live uh, a life that was full. And uh, I think family gives you that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was perking along pretty well. There was a group called Exodus International. And I'm sure that a lot of our viewers have heard of that. But there's actually been a lot of chaos within that group that I believe started out so pure and so right, and it's created all kinds of confusion. So uh, can you tell us what happened and what is going on right now with this outreach to gays in the church? Well, um, Exodus started out really uh, as, a, as kind of a chaotic, trying to figure out in the 70s, you know, what does God have for us? By about 1982, they got their charter. And uh, Frank Worthen and other leaders, they called Frank the, the father of Exodus, by that time they understood that the gospel was transformative and that you could live a life free from homosexuality. And then around uh, 2001, a new president was elected um, an executive director by the name of Alan Chambers. And he came on the scene. And First Stone, the ministry that I direct, was actually one of the founding ministries with Exodus in the early days. And there are still a, a, a bunch of ministries out there that are part of that founding. Yeah, was Exodus kind of a covering for ministries like yours? A, a covering, but more... A you, cooperation or something? It was, yeah, it'd be more like a, a servant, supposed to be, mm -hmm. more like a servant office to network, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a group of 501c3s. Mm -hmm. And so... Which so, is non-profit. Yeah, similar, <laughs> similar to like an, a denominational thing, but it's supposed to be uh, from bottom up rather than top down. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've actually reorganized a lot of the ministries and we put that back in place called Restored Hope Network. But Exodus, what happened in 2001, under the tutelage and leadership of Clark Witten, the chairman and also mentor to Alan Chambers began this, this, this new idea that Exodus was going to be this big thing that kind of uh, made a difference. And then through the antinomianistic kind of a hyper grace teaching began to erode away uh, some uh, really foundational belief that the gospel was transformative to change people. That started happening. The second thing is they started changing the bylaws systematically over a course of time so the governance changed to where it wasn't a network, a bottom-up servant type ministry. It became a top-down where Alan was able to handpick his board members and remove the directorship and so it became more of a, a, con, a controlled uh, corporation for yeah. Allen does Chambers. This, does this still exist? No, they, they folded in 2013. But the, the basic thought was, quote, maybe a term, a gay Christian, right? Right. Well, that, that started happening in, in around uh, 2009, 10. That kind of that idea, by the time of January 2012, Alan was embracing the idea of being a gay Christian. He went on a, a, the a networked with uh, the Gay Christian Network, went on a panel discussion and said that 99.9% .9 of people don't change. The gay media, of course, grab, grab that. And that's all what they continue to say over and over and over now. And you, you have solid statistics mm -hmm. that say that's not true. That's right. In Freedom Realized, 
what ended up happening during that time is I was honestly, I was really hurting. Uh, the very day I took a national stand and resigned from Exodus as a, the chairman of the ministry council, uh, my daughter uh, in, in, went into the hospital and the next day died. And so I was in a world of hurt. I was really dealing with lots of grief and sorrow. And I was crying out to God. And the, it was like the Lord reminded there's 1,200 client folders in storage. Where are those people today? A 25 years of ministry that we had since I had began in 1992 had stored actual folders, paperwork on clients that had come through our ministry, mm -hmm. 1,200. We got 500 people to con we contacted, 185 filled out a survey, and we had the results. All right, and guess what? We're out of time, but we're going to continue. Uh, make sure you tune in to Homekeepers on the very next program because Stephen will be uh, with me, and we will delve into a little bit of these wonderful statistics uh, because... Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he still delivers people from all kinds of sin, including homosexuality. So stay with me. I have a, a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I would, I would like to mention that the first stone ministry that he talked about, and he is the founder of it, uh, comes from the story of uh, when Jesus said, those that are within sin, with sin, uh, you cast the first stone. And uh, we're not casting stones at homosexuals any more than we would adulterers or thieves or liars. None of those things. Uh, we want everybody redeemed, that's for sure, but you can't change what the Bible says. And I hope that you got the information on this uh, Freedom Realized book. He will be on the next program. And I'm so thankful for an opportunity to bring every kind of subject to you, uh, certainly anything within the scripture, and thankful for the good guests that God sends our way. But we're very, very thankful to you, our viewers. Uh, you're the reason that we're here. And if you have people struggling with these issues, write to us. We'll pray with you about them. But until next time, when Stephen will be with me again, just remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.